Welcome to a new series of Salvage Squad, the show in which we take broken old beauties like this one and restore them to their prime. Doing most of the work will be the squad. Claire Barrett, industrial historian and all-round steam nut. Oh, when that's got some steam in it, it's going to run like a dream. It really is. This is an engine to be proud of. Axel Cleghorn, mechanic oh. and muscle. That's not a tool. This is a tool. And Jerry Thurston, Mr. Precision, be it with a lathe or a paintbrush. What's not supposed to happen? The challenges they'll be taking on range from an 1870 steam plow to a three-wheeled sports car from the 1930s, and even a merry-go-round once ridden by a royal. But the first challenge takes us to Chocolate Box, England, Bishop's Waltham in Hampshire. Nice church, narrow streets, and there's even a beautiful stream. It's a very special job, because we're here to restore one of the oldest types of machine there is, a water mill. From the road, you'd hardly know it was there, but down the bank, there's a fine example of the machine that helped turn us from half-starved peasant to modern, fat-bellied food consumer. For at least a thousand years, this is where Bishop's Waltham's bread came from, grown in the fields, milled at the mill, and baked just up the road. It stopped making flour about a hundred years ago when big industrial mills took over the job. For a while, it struggled on milling animal feed, though for the last 40 years, all it's been doing is growing cobwebs. But that's all going to change with the arrival of the salvage squad, Claire, Axel and Jerry. By the time the harvest's in, they hope to have the mill milling and hot loaves baking in the Bishop's Waltham Bakery. Restarting a tradition that goes back at least a thousand years. The man who's called them in is the present owner, Dr. Jeremy Nedwell, a bit of a boffin when it comes to the science of acoustics. He's had it six years, yet the place is still full of cobwebs and dereliction. Axel's not gonna like this. Indeed, not a lot seems to have happened to it at all. Ax? Yeah? Well, mate, there's plenty of woodwork for you here, mate. So I asked him the obvious question. What on earth possessed you to buy a mill? Well, it's a fantastic piece of engineering, isn't it? It's a big oh, old job, mate. <laughs> well, there's, there is an awful lot to do, I have to say. Lick a paint here and there, it'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bit more than that. <laughs> As well as being an academic, Doc Nedwell's a successful inventor, too. He found the mill by accident when he was looking for offices for one of his companies. And as soon as he showed the family round it, his life changed forever. I can remember the very first time I saw the mill. Um, I actually saw it from the road. Um, and I can remember thinking, wow, I was intended to own this mill. And now he's not just Jeremy the boffin, he's also Jeremy, the owner of a busted old mill. But a modern boff falling in love with 170-year-old technology is not as crazy as you might think. Well, I mean, it's not often you get to buy a Victorian mill, is it? These things were the pinnacle of engineering, the Victorian era, so maybe it's not that dissimilar. If, if I'd lived 100 years ago, I'd have been designing these. Since he bought it, he's tried turning it over once or twice and even made some very dodgy flour. But basically, it's in pretty much the same state it was six years ago. Oh, boy. I've, I've been dreaming about being able to, you know, see it running again and making flour since I bought it. It'd be fantastic to see it running again. Um, I mean, to be able to see the kids come in and put the grain in the top and see the flour coming out of the bottom. Yeah, fantastic. But, um, yeah, it's a, it's a major challenge. I should say it is. <laughs> I should say it is. For you. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the deal, Jeremy. We'll try and fix it, but you've got to stay away from it until it's actually fully restored. Right, so I don't get to come to the mill until it's all done. I'm afraid not. OK, it's a deal. Well, here's hoping we can fulfil it. Fantastic. <laughs> Let's hope we can. What the squad have taken on is a giant of a machine built inside a three-storey building. Outside, the water is diverted from the mill stream and into a reservoir above the wheel called a penstock. From there, it drops down onto the wheel, collecting in buckets and causing it to turn. All the milling machinery is inside. On the ground floor are huge gears turned by the water wheel outside. They have great names like the wallower and the stone nuts. It's those gears that spin round the vertical shaft that runs up to the first floor to whiz the top or runner stone around at speeds of up to 120 revolutions per minute. And it's the runner stone that cuts and grinds the hard grain into soft flour 
as it passes between it and the stone beneath. The stones are covered up by a wooden bucket called a tun, with a funnel or hopper on top. To make flour, the miller pours the grain into storage bins at the top of the mill. It then drops down a chute into the hopper on the floor below and is fed automatically into the eye of the millstones. The ground flour soon starts spilling out from the edge of the stones, drops through a hole in the floor and into a waiting sack. The final piece of kit is called the sack hoist. It's a winch driven off another shaft which the miller uses to lift the sacks of grain from the bottom of the mill up to the top floor, ready for milling into flour. To help them get their heads around this monster machine, the squad have brought in a real live millwright, Ian Clark. He's worked on 20 mills before and he's keen to get the squad cracking. So what's the order of events here? Well, we've got plenty to go at, that's for sure. I could say that. Um, I've had a good look around. We've got, uh, I think all the bits are here. Just a matter of finding where they go, really. That's where the gang come in here. The main task the squad will have to tackle is the restoration of the huge water wheel. Only the frame still exists, so all the slats or buckets would have to be remade and fitted. There are no floorboards on the first floor, so Claire's first task is going to be to relay them before working on her second task, restoring the wooden mechanism for feeding the grain into the stones. Jerry's task will be to repair the sack hoist for lifting the grain to the top of the mill. Finally, the team will have to refurbish the huge millstones that will actually grind the grain. For 2,000 years, the simple, water-powered wheel was the best engine we had, driving every type of machine from paper mills to rock crushers, which must put it high on the list of the greatest inventions of all time. It was probably a Greek who first used the water wheel to power millstones and make flour, turning the daily grind into one of the first industrial processes and so planting the seeds for the modern world. Although it looks quaint now, the water mill was the height of technology for 2,000 years, and whole societies revolved around who owned the mill and thus who controlled the food. Even the arrival of the steam engine didn't knock them off their pedestal. Then, in 1881, at an exhibition in Islington Agricultural Hall, the death knell was finally sounded for the British water mill, with the exhibition of a whole new way of milling, using steel rollers instead of stones. Within 30 years, the newfangled technology wiped out thousands of water mills, and now just a handful survive. So, that's my challenge, to find out why Waltham Chase is still here when others have disappeared. Whilst I was pondering that, the rest of the team was starting a first big task, restoring the six-ton water wheel. The first job, pumping as much water as they can out of the wheel pit before jumping in and digging out several tons of silt. With one pump squirting everywhere, the other pump was incapable of doing anything, throwing the men into a right tizzy. Keep your hands over the top, Jerry. Don't let the air in. Yes. Did you pull it? No. What's that, This is so funny. The pump, the, we've got the first pump working. Eventually, after that great big explosion, the second pump's really small, and it just won't prime. We just can't get it to pick up water and not air. There's been a mill at Waltham Chase for at least a thousand years, and it's one of 6,000 water mills mentioned in the Doomsday Book of 1086. The current mill was built around 1830, and the name of the last miller, Cecil Doveton, still hangs above the door. He closed the place down in 1957, 50 years after most other water mills had gone out of business, which makes him a bit of a survivor, and I was really hoping he was still around to fill me in on its history although I was in for a bit of a disappointment. The parish records have the names of 14 millers going back to 1486, but if Cecil Doveton's still alive, he's not living around here now. However, I did manage to track down Ronnie Spratt, who worked for him just before the Second World War, and I've arranged to meet him in the local pub. When did you start working at the mill? Late 1935. How old were you then? Uh, coming up to 15. My first job then was to go down the mill, open it all up, clean it all out, and prepare it for working. So you were a 15, 16 year old lad? That's right, yeah. Working on your own, you know? Yes, seeing to all of it. <laughs> 
So do you know, is Mr. Dovedon still alive? Uh, no, I'm afraid Mr. Dovedon passed away. But his wife, I believe, is living down on the south coast. Now that is a shame, because what Ronnie told me about his old boss, Cecil Dovedon, seemed to mirror the story of Jeremy, and it made me really wish I'd met him. It seems old Dovedon was a South African who'd fought over here during World War I and decided to stay. Years later, just like Jeremy, he found the mill in a bit of a state and on the spur of the moment decided he'd become a miller, which I find kind of odd. Whilst I was enjoying a pint with Ronnie Spratt, the squad were knee-deep in water, shoveling the silt from the wheel pit. It wasn't only the squad that were getting wet, Jeremy, the mill's new owner, was up to his neck in it too. Dare I say, with this I could rule the world testing out his new sonic bath invention. He hopes it will revolutionise the treatment of lung disorders. Mind, his kids are just grateful for the indoor pool. Hi, Dad. Hi, Dad. Hi, kids. When he's not inventing, his thoughts are always on the mill. The first day I actually owned this, I, I got up at 4 o'clock. I think I, I was excited. Um, and I actually went into the mill at 4 o'clock. When I walked in, there was mist hovering over the mill pond. Um, there were sort of strange creaking noises. Uh, it was... It, it was quite an experience, actually, sitting in there for the very first time. That romantic night was five years ago, and the mill's still not grinding corn, which makes me a bit worried. With all Jeremy's brains and enthusiasm, he was talking in years to get her running. We're talking three months, and already there are problems. Right, Axel, what I need you to do, if you can, please, can you just check the clearance from the brickwork under the water to the underside of the water wheel. Right, well, OK, mate. Yeah, we're touching the ground just about here. Touching that side. OK, check the other side. Yeah, we're touching the floor this side too. Right, well... It seems our water wheel is suffering from a bit of Miller's droop. The whole six tonnes of it have dropped over time and it's now firmly stuck on the bottom and won't budge. Well, I'm, I'm hoping... I mean, obviously, it shouldn't be sitting on the brickwork at the bottom. That's bad news. A huge oak block supports one end of the wheel, and it seems that that has rotted away, dropping the whole wheel, so it's now jammed hard on the bottom and won't turn. For even one grain of wheat to be turned to flour, the whole wheel, six tonnes in weight and 20 foot in diameter, will have to be raised. First job removing the 150-year-old brickwork that holds the old oak block in place. Well, this mortar, after 150 years, I thought it was going to be easy to get it out, but this stuff, it looks easy, it's just compacted. It's making my job so hard, it's unbelievable. Whilst Axel gets on with the butch stuff, the others are making a start inside. Claire's teamed up with local joiner, Derek Hurst, to start her first task the small matter of the missing floor. We're stepping from joist to joist at the moment. You certainly are, yes. Meanwhile, Ian's getting Jerry started on his task, the sack hoist. That will bring the grain from the ground floor up to the top, ready for milling. So, is this a sack hoist? This is it. It goes all the way from up there, Yep. right down through that trapdoor to the bottom. Right. It takes the corn from the bottom of the mill to the top. What we're looking at is a winch, powered by the water wheel. When the grain is delivered, the miller simply attaches the chain to the sack, engages the winch, and 280 pounds of grain whizzes up to the top. The only problem is, all the bits and bobs that make it work were taken off way back when. So Jerry's first job is a bit of a treasure hunt. Right. Now that's the sack hoist. Where are the bits? After all the cold and wet of cleaning out the wheel pit, things are hotting up, but there's a long way to go until baking day. It's all right, mate, I've got the weight. <laughs> Good. Next piece we need. Piece of bed. Worth a look, I think. OK, let's get this one in, then. biggest task is to raise all six tons of water wheel by a couple of inches and for that you need a little diddy bottle jack 
Just right. take, a, take a couple of pounds and we'll have a, have a look at it, yeah? Okay, mate. Okay, that's all that, do you? Yeah, enough. Just chill out, mate. Okay. Once the wheel is lifted, Ian and his assistant Adrian pull out the bearing, leaving the whole lot balanced on the jack. This is a dangerous bit. Before quickly inserting some wood to temporarily support the wheel. I can't believe what we've just done. We've had like six tons on the like, size of a ten pence piece. If this one would have gone, it could have gone either way. And that means this would have cracked. The job would have been finished. We'd have had to go home. They're just blocking it up now, which is really, really good. Once they've done that, they're going to have about another eighth of an inch to go in. Then I can let it back down and rest. Then we should be fine and safe. Okay, actually, you can take the weight off, mate. Right. Come down nice and gently. Really slow, yeah. Yeah, please. Okay. Even with the wood in place, Axel's still a bit nervy. You almost give me a heart attack, man. What's that, then? I thought the thing was coming down. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, job done. Good one, mate. Still coming Thanks. down? <laughs> <laughs> that went quite nicely, didn't it? It was all right, wasn't it? Yeah. This is the next problem. We actually need to clean the bearing up. We also need to remove this housing. We or I? You, sorry. Oh, I. <laughs> the royal we. Certainly cast iron. Inside the mill, Jerry's found the bits and bobs he needs to restore the sack hoist. Look at this dirty, great big thing. A big cog above one of the millstones powers the main drive shaft for the sack hoist. A system of belts and pulleys takes the drive up onto the top floor where the chain is attached. As with so much restoration, Jerry's first task is to clean up the parts, starting with the main drive shaft. After 75 floorboards, there's just one more to go before Claire's finished, allowing her to head out and start working on the water wheel. When the wheel's working, the water will collect in 42 separate slats or buckets as it turns. That's what you're looking at. But the old ones are rusted beyond repair. We need a new set. That's not holding any water, is it? So it's out with the tape measure and off to the sheet metal workers with an order for 42 new ones. Ronnie Spratt, the old miller's assistant, had told me how his old boss, a South African, had saved the mill in 1932. It had closed down some years before, unable to compete with modern mills. But Doveton reckoned he could make a go of it by milling animal feed instead of flour. Although the fact he became a miller had more to do with fate than his business sense, according to his widow, Ina Doveton. The gypsy told him, I can see with running water. When he came across Waltham Chase Mills, he thought, this must be it. How mm. extraordinary. Mm. Now, I don't get too excited about fortune tellers and the like. I mean, it could have been coincidence. But then, Ina told me how she met her husband-to-be just outside the mill. When I got to the bridge, funny enough, there was a ring, like a wedding <laughs> ring on the, on the bridge, so I picked it up and put it in my pocket, and as I crossed the bridge, he came along in his car. <laughs> well, by pure coincidence, there was a wedding oh, ring? Yes, yeah, strange. And he pulled up and spoke spoke to me. I didn't mention the ring, of course. <laughs> I wasn't that bold. <laughs> and he said, would you be my secretary? And it's from there that I married him. How old would you have been then? I'm not telling you. <laughs> you dare ask such things. <laughs> Back at the mill, it's all systems go. Jerry's still working on his sack hoist drive shaft, filing away as if his life depended on it. Claire's picked up the new steel buckets from the sheet metal workers. The oak block's been made, and the boys are finishing fitting the new steel lining on the wheel. Inside, Axel's got the main bearing shining again. So now there's nothing stopping them getting on with the most critical task of all, jacking up six tonnes of water wheel and inserting the new block and bearing. If they've got their calculations right, the wheel should be clear of the bottom and ready to turn. Jerry, Claire, come have a look at this. We're going to turn the wheel. Are you ready? Yeah. You better take that now. 
We're going to turn it. OK. Ready? Everybody clear? Yeah. Yeah. Look at that! Hey! Brilliant, eh? We're making bread. Top job! But they won't be bread until they've got all 42 of the new steel buckets fitted. That's about right. Look at that. Okay, nice one. Oh! Oh, mate. Hey! <laughs> All right. I hope we can get that. <laughs> the job's going to stop without that. No, actually, that's not a spanner. <laughs> what is that? I don't know. It looks like a key, mate. Right. Oh, I can see the spanner's there. It's been a while since I saw the mill, and although I was on my way to meet up with Jeremy, who was practising his milling up the road, I couldn't resist popping in on the way. How's it been? Really good. You've come at a really good time, actually. Yeah? You never believe what we've just found, but... How extraordinary! The Royal... Royal Week. Well, you might have found <laughs> it. <laughs> How amazing. Where was it? Just down there. In the water. How absolutely fantastic. What do you reckon it is? Well, it's been down a long time, hasn't it? Look at the state of it. It's a key. <laughs> <laughs> to what? <laughs> a door? <laughs> I mean, it may just be the front door key. I mean, there's, I mean there's, a, there's a brand new lock well, and a fairly new lock on there, but that could be the original one. Have you tried it yet? Oh, yeah, no. You just literally just pitched up and we found it. Fantastic. Well, let's give it a go. Shall we try it? Give me your cheeky with keys. Come on in. <laughs> no, I don't believe yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. That's fantastic. Really that is amazing. And do you know what? I think I know who dropped that. Yeah, all right. Yeah, go on. <laughs> I've just been talking to Ronnie Spratt, who ran the mill 60 years ago. Yeah, you know what it's like. You're coming home from the pub, trying to find your keys, block. Isn't that amazing? 60 odd years that's probably been in there. Well, at least we can lock up now. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> hey, hey! We've got a floor. <laughs> Nothing but the best for you. What are you up to, Jerry? Drive shaft for the sack hoist. Which will pull the sacks up through the floors. Surely will. And hopefully attach yourself to it and take you with it. <laughs> Thank That's you so much. Now, what are you doing, Claire? Uh, this is what, 90% of restoration. It's me and a wire brush. <laughs> it's not a wire brush, it's a toothbrush. <laughs> no, it looks like it. They don't get come any bigger. <laughs> <laughs> and what is this? Uh, this fits over, this is called a tun, it fits over the stones and it keeps the flour from flying everywhere. When the mill is working, the millstones themselves are covered up by the tun to stop the flour whizzing out of the stones and going everywhere. On top of the tun will sit the mechanism for feeding the grain into the centre of the stones. The whole lot's called the stone furniture. It's like an upside down bucket. That's exactly it. That's exactly well, fantastic. It. Keep up the good work. Don't let me stop you. My visit might have been swift, but there was a trainee miller up the road practicing with master of the trade, oh, Patrick the Appleby. There you are. You've got plenty in there. Oh, is that a fantastic yeah. smell? It yeah. Wafts out you should really be smelling it quite close. Oh, okay. Uh, scoop some up. That's it. And I was keen to go see what this milling lark was all about. Oh, there it goes. Good. Keep going. Keep going as far as it'll go. Fully open. Yeah. Okay. We'll need all that power. What Jeremy's learning is the fine art of constantly adjusting the gap between the stones to create the finest flour. The only way he can find out if he's got it right is by monitoring the quality of the flour as it comes out and adjusting the stones accordingly. Right, now that's a little course. I'm going to leave you to do the setting okay. now, see how you get on. OK. All right, I'll, Good luck. Uh, I'll push on with this while you're doing the grain. Hey, Jeremy, how's it going, mate? Oh, hi, how are you doing? Nice Good. to see you. And you, what are you doing? Uh, I'm a miller. <laughs> <laughs> well, Already? Nearly, nearly. <laughs> I'm milling, but uh, have a smell, come on. It's not bad. Isn't that really something? It needs to be made into blackberry and apple crumble, in my opinion. But there you go. Um, I'm glad you've come, actually, because there's actually about a quarter of a tonne of grain there that needs to go up to the top floor. Two flights of stairs. Uh, for a man of your strength, I'm sure that's absolutely no problem. Well, thank you very much indeed, Jeremy. It's that's been great. real. I'll, I'll look after the middle here. It's been real. <laughs> ah! Yeah, it is real. <laughs> You're a joke. Until this moment, I'd always thought of myself as a rather strong, red-blooded type. But after four sacks, I vowed to have the word wimp tattooed on my forehead. Well, thanks very much for that taste of milling, <laughs> Jeremy, very much indeed.
Yeah, up and down the stairs. Imagine what it would be like if you're doing that 12 hours a day, eh? Well, that's what you want to be doing, isn't it? <laughs> I'm not so sure, though. <laughs> the milling is actually fantastic. I mean, it's been really quite something to run the mill, make the flour, smell the smell, see the dust, all those things. It's absolutely great. I suppose, really, this is, this is sort of the champagne of flour, isn't it? It's the handmade product. It's the stuff where every grain is plucked from the, the plant in the field, I suppose, and, and goes through the mill. Yeah, I remember there was a flower advert when I was a kid which seemed to infer that if it wasn't sieved properly, you'd get lumps in it. Have you had any problem Lumpy with that? Lumpy Give me a jacket. <laughs> Look, hold your hands out. All right? Hold, never that. Okay. Look, just put your nose into that, see what you think. I thought you were going to push my face into it there. <laughs> now that's nice, isn't, isn't that it? That's a lovely consistency. Yeah, that's I, beautiful. I'm, I'm really proud that yeah. I've made that flower. But holding it in my hands, I can feel some of that pride. Isn't it good? It is. Fantastic stuff. Well, I've got to tell you, you're mad. Jeremy the Mad Miller. <laughs> I like that. But tell me, what's happening to Chase Mill? <laughs> <laughs> you want a mill in your own mill, don't you? I, I, I want to go there. I want to see it turning. Well, I'm afraid you can't just yet, but I can tell you it's really going quite well, yeah. Uh, quite yeah. well. <laughs> <laughs> Not very well, just quite well. <laughs> it's going pretty well. Actually, we're up against it. The harvest is ripening in the fields, and we've only got the water wheel turning under human power. If they are going to get it milling again, Claire's got to get on with a third big task, fixing the millstones. Whilst Jerry's still working on the sack hoist, which is about to lead to a bit of a falling out with our expert, Ian getting? Clark. How are you getting on? Well, oh, I think it's come up quite nicely. What do you reckon? It looks nice. How much have you written you've taken off? Oh, I reckon I've taken a good 15 or 20 thou off that because it was very, very ridged. All right. Better check see how much we've taken off, I think. Uh, there's your bearings. That's the bearing we, we fitted up. I would say that's now a rattling good fit. Um, Some off the faces? I think we might have overcooked that, Jerry, a little bit. I know we're a bit agricultural here, but I think... Uh, hmm. I think we need to reassess this whole shaft now. <laughs> right. Um, I mean, it just wasn't round before. It's as simple as that. Well, you saw it. Somebody had been at it with an angle grinder. But I thought we were just going to sort of take the burrs off and... Oh. I reckon you've probably taken a millimetre off of there. Which is... 40 thou. 42 thou, yeah. No, 40 thou, yeah. Yeah. Whoops-a-daisy. Looks nice. like Jerry's narrowed uh, the shaft way too much, thought. which hasn't endeared him to Ian. I think probably I, I assumed too much and... Uh, we talked about the, the new bearing and it being fitted to the shaft, and I presume we understood the relationship between the two. I mean, he's the one that bangs on about a thousand inch of clearance, and now we've got 40,000 clearance, so um, it's not the end of the world, but maybe I should have stood over him and talked about it more in depth. I'm happy with what I've done. Ian's not thrilled with what I've done, but uh, it's going to be good in the end, so it doesn't really matter as far as I'm concerned. It might not look like much, but a rattly bearing like this can soon cause major problems. We won't know how big until we start it up. With Jerry in the doghouse, Claire turns her attention to the next task, restoring the huge millstones that will actually grind the flour. The bottom or bedstone doesn't turn. Instead, the water wheel turns the upper or runner stone at speeds of around 100 revolutions per minute. It's the grooves or furrows in the stones that slice the grain into flour as it's forced from the central eye out to the edges. The millstones at Waltham Chase aren't actually solid, but made up of chips of stone and cement. To stop them flying apart as they grind, the whole lot is encased in a steel band. That has seen better days and will need to be replaced. Band off, the new one can be slipped on and welded into place. Now, hopefully, the stone won't shatter when it's spinning round at 100 times per minute, but it won't make flour unless it's been sharpened. 
So Claire's been learning the ancient art of stone dressing under the watchful eye of Martin Watts, one of the few stone dressers still around. Sharpening, or dressing the stone, is all about flattening off the high spots and re-chiselling the all-important grooves or furrows which will actually cut the grain. What's coming on? Oh, yeah. doing this day in, day out. Well, it should get easier the more you do, shouldn't it? <laughs> it's a laborious job. A busy mill would need their stones dressed every three to four weeks, and each stone would take at least half a day. So Claire's got her work cut out, which is why I've been summoned. Things are all getting a bit frantic down at the mill. Ian's wrote me in to help out and make something called a slip cog. What's a slip cog? Hey? Eh? So, Ian, the slip cog. The slip cog up here. If you can see, if you look under, there's a removable section of the gear. We can run the wheel, but we can't grind flour. So we need that. That's the key to the mill. So how would I go about getting a, key, uh, a slip cog? Well, I'll give you a drawing. If you can get yourself down to the pattern makers, they'll make you a wooden pattern. Then you can take that to the foundry. You can think of a slip cog as a set of keys for the mill. Slip it out, and the gear wheels will not engage, so the millstones cannot turn. Just like a key, the slip cog has to be a perfect fit. So, I'd better do a good job. Well, it's an apprentice job, really. I mean, you could do it, even. <laughs> These hands haven't been used in any form of work for 20 years or more. Ah, uh, we'll get you through it. <laughs> Part of a bit of tambourine with the right hand. <laughs> hey. Mr Braithmate, my old woodwork teacher, said I'd never use one of these and be able to count to ten afterwards. How about that, Mr Braithwaite? It's got to be 25 years since I had last had one of these in my hand. And yet it comes back so effortlessly. A slip cog fit for a key. <laughs> a bit there. What do you reckon? Yeah. Why? I did a bit of painting and decorating when I was younger. Actually. You never stop learning. What? That appears to be OK. All those measurements OK? Yep. Excellent. There you go. There's your pattern and your drawing. What we've got to do is take it to the foundry now and get it cast. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure doing business with you, Chris. Okay. Whilst I was off to get my yeah. slip cog cast, yeah. Yeah. Jerry was finally ready to put his sack hoist with its nicely slimmed down drive shaft back together again. <laughs> grab that, grab that. Right. Where? All right, lads, I've got the head. Here they are. Good girl. Don't worry about it. That's all right. We're not worrying. No, I know you're not. It's technology at its simplest. At one end, a monster gear wheel turned by the water wheel will drive Jerry's shaft around. Its spinning motion transferred to another shaft one floor up by a huge leather belt drive. It's the spinning shaft at the top that pulls the chain up. Right, you ready to just slide it back gently, Axel? Yeah. Really? Yeah, very slowly. How's that? Well, a little bit. Evil. Come on, we go to <laughs> Come on. Just slide her on. Mesh her up. Oh, well, that'll do. Let's make sure it's meshed. That's it. It's a little bit tight. I thought there should be loads of room. That like Jerry took off. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Get a belt on that, and we're halfway through our sack hoist. Excellent. We've now completed most of the tasks. The water wheel's been restored, there's new floorboards on the second floor, and rattling, bearing or not, Jerry's sack hoist should be ready to go. All we have to do now is restore the pin stock and put the stones back together, and we should be ready to mill. The pin stock is the giant reservoir above the water wheel, and Axel's first job is to clean out all the muck. When we are milling, the water will swoosh down through a trapdoor or sluice right above the wheel, filling the buckets and making the wheel turn. Inside, Claire's cleaning up the lever that operates it. If I move this lever when the penstock out there is full of water, the sort of trapdoor's going to open and all the water in there is going to start going onto the water wheel. The next thing you know, everything starts moving. So really, this is like the power switch for the mill. Claire, can you pull the handle now, please? All right! It's moving! How's that? Any 
your luck, we'll be able to get the wheel to go around now. To fire her up, all you need to do is dam up the mill stream with a couple of planks, wait a bit whilst the pin stock fills up, open the sluice, and bingo! The world's oh, oldest engine kicks into action. Here we go. One. Come on. Yeah, one. Give it a second. That's it? Yeah. Whee! Yeah, you missed it, Claire. Whoa! Wicked. Not bad, is it? Look at the velocity of the water's coming out. Yeah. So, we have sharp stones, a sack hoist, and one heck of a cool wheel. All we need now is my slip cog and a miller, and we'll be making top quality flour for the first time in a hundred years. First, though, the newly sharpened stones have to be reunited with each other. Thank you. Hey. Slowly. Slowly. Don't want to muck it up at the last moment. Yeah. Yeah, we'll just clear now. Houston, we have contact. Hey! The top, or runner stone, literally balances on top of its drive shaft and can be raised or lowered by a fraction to adjust the gap and control the quality of the flower. Once in place, the squad add lead weights to make sure it's perfectly balanced. Too much weight on one side would cause it to wobble and strike the stone beneath. Behind this side. It's good. It's not bad across yeah. there. With the runner balanced, we're ready to put on the wooden ton and the rest of the mechanism that will feed the grain into the eye of the stones. This is kind of the business end. This is where all the grain ends up. It shoot, comes down from above into the hopper, which is supported on the horse here. And you've got the shoe rattling backwards and forwards, dropping just the right amount of grain into the centre of the millstones. Now, if you get too much, the stones just clog, and, you, you know, it's just useless. If you don't get enough, the millstones start rubbing together, they get hotter and hotter, and that's when mills burn down. The final piece to be fitted is the brass bell that will warn Jeremy when the hoppers are empty. A few measly months ago, all we had was cobwebs and rust. Now, as Axel finishes the bridge over the mill pit, the mill's ready to be reunited with her owner and run up for the first time. It's, it's absolutely fantastic. I, I, I don't know what to say. It's, <laughs> it's, it's there and it's, I, I guess it's working. I'm going to see it turning. Can, I, can, I, uh, yeah, sure can, can I go take a look? Just before you go in. <laughs> um, one thing might interest you. We were digging in the sill. We found this. What, what's that? Yeah. Oh, no. Good grief. It's the key. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Saw that. Never. <laughs> I've been up it through the window for the last six years. Oh, fantastic. It, it, it's the actual key. It's the actual key. I don't believe this. Yeah. Boy, oh, that's fantastic. That wasn't there before. God, it all looks so different. Oh, there's uh, sax as well. Yeah, Great. Well, sax. well, then Chase Mill. I can't wait to see the rest of it. I think you're going to like it up here, Jeremy. <laughs> oh, there's a floor. We didn't have a floor last time. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, and we have a bell. Great. <laughs> New shoes as well. Well, yeah, Claire's working with a toothbrush. Oh, there's a lay shaft. There certainly that's is. For the, um, for the sack hoist. Yep. That's, that's, all, that's all Jerry's work. That, you can see your face in that. Oh, it's absolutely beautiful, isn't it? Fantastic. It must have taken ages. I didn't want to tell him that the shaft's yeah, a bit thin and can. don't half rattle yeah, in its bearing. Oh, good grief. Yeah, this is all uh, locked tight than it was when I last <laughs> saw it. Yeah. The chain hoist. That's right. And it's working. Uh, I do hope so. Oh, fantastic. It's an absolutely fantastic job. They have worked very hard. Uh, can we get it going? I do hope it works, Jeremy. Come on, let's give it a try. Come on. <laughs> The only thing stopping the stones running now is the slip cog, the missing teeth I made the new pattern for. All we have to do is pop it in and we're in business. Jeremy, here's the last piece you need, one handcrafted slip cog. And a beautiful job it is too. Glad in it goes. Let's hope it does go. Yes! The last piece. Let's mill. Fantastic. Time to dam up the pen stock and get her rolling. Yay! Let's get that wheel turning. Definitely. Come on then, the moment <laughs> we've all been waiting this for. This is it. Are you, have you got your fingers crossed? The moment of truth. <laughs> Let's go. Well, the water's flowing. 
It's moving! Oh, it's so yeah. 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 Fantastic! Can I go take a look at the wheel? Come on. Mind your head. Oh, look at that! Great! Not too shabby, is it? <laughs> oh, boy, oh, boy. I mean, isn't it quite something to think that's probably the first time it's turned like in 60 years? Well done! Look at me. Yeah, great. Well done. Congratulations. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, well done. It? Great. Oh, yeah. really good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Inside, the huge gear wheels are beginning to turn the stones once more. Look at that stone go! Excellent. Now they can be covered with the tongue, and we can finally put Jerry's sack hoist to the test. If it doesn't work, he'll be lugging the stuff up himself. bit rattly, but at least Jerry's off the hook. Now, there's no time to waste. In a few hours, the great and good of Bishop's Waltham will be arriving, expecting to sample the first decent bread made from Waltham Chase flour in almost a hundred years. As the first grain drops into the hopper, we are seconds away from milling. One, two, three. Floor down, and Jeremy's about to have his dreams come true. That's so Did you ever good. believe you'd see the moment, look, Jeremy? Look. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> How does that feel, Jeremy? Your own flower. Fantastic. Fantastic. Brilliant. Cool, you'd never believe what this stuff smells like. So we're looking for the smoothness look at that. with the little grains in it. That's beautiful. That Good white content. Yeah. Nice brown. Yeah. Absolutely perfect. It's fantastic. I think we're almost ready to bake, mate. Look, look, look. You don't believe it's the bake. This is serious milling. Ooh, smell that. <laughs> You've got about 47 loaves worth already. <laughs> Who's sexy after me or Nigella, eh? You are officially a miller, <laughs> eh? Oh, fantastic. What a moment. Up at the bakery, the first of Axel and Jerry's loaves are coming out of the oven. And the feast can begin. I'll be waiting a long time for this. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Mr. Ronnie Sprat, I'd like to... Uh, present you with the commemorative first loaf. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> and, and the end product, I just can't stop looking at it. It's fantastic. Well worth it in the end.